Doing business in India is no easy thing, but a handful of successful multinational companies has proven it can be done. Ravi Venkatesan was curious to find out what sets them apart from scores of other companies that either have pulled out of India or have become content with low returns on their Indian investment. The key, he says, is conquering the chaos. In fact, I use the word chaos as shorthand for corruption, uh, bu bureaucracy, uh, uncertainty of policies and volatility, bad infrastructure, all that sort of stuff, that cocktail of things. Venkatesan spent more than two decades dealing with that stuff, first building the India business of U.S. engine maker Cummins, and then as chairman of Microsoft India. Now he says he's moderately optimistic about the country's future and sees it as a crucial location for any company with the mindset of becoming a global leader. I think the most important thing to do is be clear why you're going there, okay? Um, and the really successful companies have this view, hey, how can we be global if we aren't present in China, India, and other such places? How can we be a leader in our industry if we're not a leader in a country with 1.2 billion people? Those that succeed in India will have access to that huge and increasingly affluent consumer population. But just as importantly, Venkatesan says they will have developed a business model that they can apply elsewhere. India is important not just as a market, but actually it's an archetype for a whole class of emerging markets. And therefore you need to treat it as a lab where you develop your model and develop your skills. Based on his own experience, plus research and interviews with dozens of other CEOs and leaders, he's identified some common traits of successful MNCs in India. In addition to having the right mindset, they also take a long-term view. McDonald's, for example, spent seven years and $100 million figuring out how to run a hamburger chain in a mostly vegetarian country. So the only things common between McDonald's in India and McDonald's anywhere else is fries, Coke and shakes. The entire menu is different. They had to figure that out. Successful companies also find ways to deal with the country's notorious corruption rather than run away from it. Because Venkatesan says this corruption map shows there aren't many places to run. India is out there glowing orange. But what else do, is obvious? Most of the world is corrupt. Almost all emerging markets ha suffer from very high levels of corruption. That leaves companies with two choices. Stay out of the market until it's less corrupt. Or you can say, hey, we've got to figure out how to build successful businesses in highly corrupt environments without sacrificing our values. And that's a skill we have to develop. Despite India's reputation for chaos and corruption, Venkatesan says it has a number of positive attributes, like the quality of talent and the strength of its economy. And he says multinationals also can learn some things from India, like frugality. Operating on a shoestring, uh, designing products that deliver 70, 80% of the value or the performance or whatever, but at 30% the price, this is very much in the Indian DNA. Then Katesan believes that companies that apply these lessons to win in India will be well positioned to win everywhere else. For NUS Business School, I'm Katie Sargent.